Hello and welcome to the Sally Tomato channel. I'm Kate and today I'd like to show you how to make a pillow for traveling comfort. Use our Paris pattern to create yours, customized to your preferred softness and then choose between an adjustable strap or a simple handle to carry alone or clip to a carry-on. First we'll add darts for shaping, then assemble and fill the pillow, and finally we'll add the pillow ends and then make the adjustable strap or the simple handle. The name of Paris for this pillow was inspired by our Around the World series and also all the places we'd love to visit. And the city of Paris in France is one of them. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning this tutorial. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local quilt shop. Remember to shop local whenever you can. The illustrated pattern is sectioned off in easy to follow steps and of course you can always pause the video if you need a little extra time or need to take a break but I'm sure you're ready to get started so gather your supplies and I'll see you at the work table. Before beginning review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover and also the pattern corrections page on our website for any updates. You'll need a soft main fabric for the pillow. I'm using a softer faux fur fabric and a sturdier contrast fabric such as faux leather or cork as I have here. You'll also need a few pieces of hardware. We've included a list of helpful notions and tools on the back of the pattern cover and refer to your pattern for seam allowances, stitch lengths and the cutting instructions. If your main fabric is wide enough to cut one piece A, then you'll skip to the next section in your pattern. If you have two pieces A, place them right sides together, aligning both edges of the main piece A pillow pieces, and then sew one short edge, and then you'll press that seam open. And before I forget, let's shape the pillow ends. Position a circle template in each bottom corner of the contrast pieces B. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge. Then cut along the marked lines to round the bottom corners. And then set these pieces aside for now and we'll move on to marking the darts. For marking the darts, you'll need to copy or trace the dart template from your pattern. On the wrong side, mark center along one long edge of the main piece A pillow. Measure from the right of that mark and then position the dart template aligned to the fabric edge. Then you'll trace the angled edges of the dart. Measure from the right of the traced dart and then trace another dart and repeat for a third dart. We'll also need to add darts at the ends of the pillow. To do that, center and trace the dart template at both short ends of piece A. And then for the last darts, position the dart template centered over the raw edge at the corners, aligning the long center line on the template with the long edge of piece A. Then trace the angle of the dart template. Now you can take your time and cut out the darts following your traced lines. Now add the machine with right sides together, match the adjacent angled straight edges of one dart on main piece A pillow. Sew along the angled edge of the dart and remember to back stitch at the beginning and end of the seam. And then you'll repeat this same step for all the remaining darts along the short and long edges. All right, we are ready to begin assembling our pillow. With right sides together, we're going to align the long edges that have all the darts sewn into them and starting at the short end I'll align that angled edge and then as I get to a dart I'm going to press just with my fingers the dart seam allowances in opposite directions to help distribute the bulk and then either with pins or sewing clips hold those edges together and 
as soon as I get this edge pinned, I will see you at the sewing machine. All right, now we're going to sew along the pinned edge and carefully stitching over the darts to keep the allowances flat. Now turn the pillow right side out through an open end. At one short end with the seam and the dart allowances at the outer edges, pin and then baste across, closing that end. And now you're ready to fill the pillow to your desired firmness. Remember to check the manufacturer's laundering recommendations of the filling material and that it's compatible with your pillow fabrics. I'm using just a basic polyester fiber fill for my pillow. Once you've filled your pillow, then baste the filling opening shut. All right, we're ready to make and attach the connectors. First, top stitch each long edge of the contrast PC connectors and then you'll thread one PC through one D-ring. Fold the raw ends of the connector so that they meet in the middle, which is going to be the underside. And you can certainly add basting tape as you're folding. With the right side up, now center one connector on one contrast piece B pillow end so that the top is just down from the top edge and the D-ring is at the bottom or towards the curved end and you can kind of see my marking on my pillow end. Then you can use basting tape or paper tape to hold that connector in place. And you're going to repeat this same process for the second connector. Using a zipper foot or a narrow foot, top stitch each connector near the hardware and then pivot to sew along the remaining edges, forming a box. As an option, if you'd like, you could certainly top stitch an X within the box for a little extra style. All right, now we can move on to attaching those pillow ends. On the wrong side, mark a line below the top straight edge of the plain contrast piece B pillow end and add a piece of basting tape just above that marked line. So in between the cut edge and the marked line, then position one end of the pillow on piece B, aligning the pillow end. Position one end of the pillow on piece B, aligning the raw edge to the marked line. Then press onto the basting tape. And you can see I'm adding several pieces of basting tape to the right side of the pillow, but also on the wrong side of the plain piece B. And then you'll place contrast piece B with a D-ring right side up on top and aligning the outer raw edges of the two pieces B and certainly feel free to add extra sewing clips to help hold those shaped curved edges together. Now you'll top stitch all the edges and you can see I've used a few more sewing clips to help keep those raw edges aligned around the curved and you're going to repeat these steps to attach the remaining pieces B to the opposite pillow end. All right, our pillow ends are attached and now we can move on to our straps. To make the adjustable strap, follow Jess's video tutorial, how to make an adjustable cork fabric strap on youtube.com Sally Tomato. Attach a swivel hook to each strap end if you like a shorter handle, then you'll take piece E and with wrong sides together, fold it in half lengthwise and then top stitch along each long side. Then you'll thread one end of piece E through a swivel hook, fold the end of the handle or piece E to the underside and then top stitch the end of the handle to itself, just as you see what I've done here. And if you like, top stitch an X in the stitched box. And you'll repeat the same steps to complete the opposite end of the handle, attaching the remaining swivel hook. Congratulations, your Paris is complete. A neck pillow can make all the difference during a travel itinerary, giving you comfort and support to allow for rest and relaxation. Take Paris along with you on your next road trip. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful and got some extra hints too. 
If you like this mini pattern, join our monthly mini club for only $5 a month and receive a new mini pattern to your mailbox or inbox each month. These mini patterns are designed for all skill levels and are intended to be an easy sew project. Most patterns will include a video tutorial on our YouTube channel. Share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Paris Pillow Pattern. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We always enjoy hearing from you. So thank you so much for sewing with me today and I'll see you again next time.